Observable was designed to help you and your team make sense of data together, even when that data is highly sensitive and must be kept private. In this demo, we'll cover the security measures we've put in place and everything you need to safely work with your organization's private data without exposing it to us or to the outside world. We're going to look at the security implications of Observable's architecture and data flow, and we'll demonstrate how to safely access data with file attachments, secrets, cloud files, and databases, and how to configure your team members' permissions to best suit your organization. To understand how Observable keeps your data safe, it helps to know a little about how things work under the hood and how information is shared between three key places. Our ObservableHQ.com servers and database, your organization's own data infrastructure, and your local machine and browser where you view a notebook. Each cell in an Observable notebook has two parts. The source code seen in a gray or blue box and the value computed by that code seen above the source code. The source code of each cell is stored on our servers and is only accessible to you and others you've explicitly shared the notebook with. But the value of each cell is calculated locally by running the cell's code directly in your browser. In this case, observable servers see that in this cell, we have JavaScript code calculating the length of the string. But the actual number generated by that code is computed locally in the browser, and each browser client runs notebook code independently. In this text input cell, the call to inputs text and the type here placeholder text are stored on our servers. But whatever you type into the box and any resulting calculations like the string length computed in the following cell are local to your browser. In addition to cell's source code, our servers store additional metadata attached to the notebook, such as comments you or your teammates have left. So keep in mind that comments should not include passwords, secrets, or other sensitive information. File attachments are also saved on our servers. The paperclip icon on the right of the notebook opens the data pane, which gives you the option to upload local files as attachments to your notebook. Any files you upload are stored as securely encrypted files on our AWS S3 cloud backend, accessible only to you and anyone you share the notebook with. File attachments are great for non-sensitive information like a logo or image, or perhaps a sample CSV file with mock data. But please be aware that sensitive or private data that cannot leave your local machine or your company's network should not be uploaded as file attachments. Storing your notebook's source code and metadata on our servers is what lets us provide valuable features like version history and reverting edits, forking and merging forks, and sharing notebooks with individuals and teams. Executing that code locally in your browser is what gives notebooks all the superpowers of the web ecosystem, instant feedback, and live updates. The separation between the two is what lets you analyze and visualize your private data in a notebook without exposing that data. Now you might be wondering, what if the data you need to access is stored on your organization's own data backend or a private API? Let's take a look at how to use that data safely in a notebook without exposing the data itself or the credentials needed to access it using observable secrets, cloud files, and database connectors. Clicking on your avatar in the top right corner of your notebook, you can navigate to the settings page for your team account or your individual account if you're working solo. On the settings page, you'll see the secrets tab on the right. Secrets let you store private credentials like internal access tokens or third-party API keys. Click the button to add a new secret and you'll be prompted to give the secret a descriptive name, which you'll use to access this secret later. And then enter its value. Once you've created a secret, its name will be displayed on the settings page and you'll also be able to see who on your team created each secret and when. Secret values are stored securely encrypted in our database and can be changed or deleted anytime from the settings page. Back in the notebook, you can now access the secret value with the built-in secret function If you created the secret in your team account, anyone on the team can now use the secret in their team notebooks. You can use the secret function to access the value wherever it's needed. 
For example, I might insert a secret access token into a URL so that I can fetch data from my organization's internal API. As you can see, only the name of the secret is captured in the source code. The value of the secret is never saved as part of the notebook code, but instead retrieved and decrypted locally at runtime. The secret function will throw an error if you try to access a secret name that doesn't exist, or if you publish the notebook. For safety, secrets can only be used in private notebooks and those shared privately within a team. Secrets let you access your organization's private data infrastructure, as well as third-party APIs and cloud providers such as AWS. Visit observablehq.com templates for a collection of ready-to-fork examples of using secrets to connect to common services like AWS, GitHub, and Stripe. If the data you need to access is in a cloud-hosted file, such as an Excel spreadsheet in your company's shared Microsoft account, you can access it directly from Observable via our Cloud Files connector. To connect to a cloud file in your notebook, open the data pane with the paperclip icon and click the plus icon to add a new cloud file. Then choose the cloud provider you'd like to connect to, in this case, Microsoft, and you'll be prompted to log into your provider account if you're not logged in already. Once connected, navigate to the file you'd like to use in your notebook and click connect. Observable will automatically add some new cells to your notebook to read the file and start working with the data it contains. In this case, the contents in an Excel spreadsheet. Observable securely connects to your cloud provider account using an OAuth token associated with your individual Observable account. And these are managed on an individual per user basis, unlike secrets or database connections, which are provisioned at the team level. If you ever need to manage or revoke access to a cloud provider account, you can view and delete your OAuth tokens from your own account settings page. And independent of Observable, your organization's administrator can still control or revoke individuals' access to cloud resources using your cloud provider's own permission system. You may also need to securely explore and query data directly from your organization's own databases, which Observable supports via a feature called database connectors. On the settings page, you may have noticed the databases tab on the right. That's exactly where we're headed now. Click on new database, and you'll be prompted to enter the name, type, and credentials for your database. We currently support MySQL, Postgres, and databases compatible with those protocols, as well as Google BigQuery and Snowflake. Give the database a name, select the database type, and fill out the host information and user credentials. For this demo, we'll assume you've got a Postgres database to connect to and have created a dedicated read-only user for accessing your data from Observable, which we recommend as an added security measure. You may also want to use SQL grant permissions to restrict that user to the specific tables and columns your team will need. We also recommend requiring SSL encrypted connections for security. What about this connection hosted by setting? Database connectors rely on an HTTPS database proxy to securely relay queries from your notebook to the database. If your database is accessible from the public internet, it's most convenient to use the default observable hosted connection proxy, which securely relays data to your notebook without ever storing any of your data on our servers. But if your database is running locally or behind a private VPN, or if you aren't able to share the credentials or let data leave your company's network, you can also run a self-hosted database proxy using our open source database proxy package for Node.js. See our documentation for details. Once you've added the database, back in your notebook, you can access it by opening the data pane with the paperclip icon in the right, adding a new database, and selecting the one you just configured. This will add a new cell in your notebook that uses the built-in database client function to create a client connected to your database. The database client provides convenient methods like describe to see which tables are available. Or to see the schema of a given table. The client's query method lets you run a SQL query against the database 
and returns the resulting data as a JavaScript array. We can even pass that to a table input for readability. Like secrets, for your security database connectors only work in private notebooks. If you try to connect to a database from a notebook that has been published, or try to connect to a database that doesn't exist in your account, the client will throw an error. For more details on working with database clients and their available methods, see our documentation on connecting to databases. To recap, we've seen how secrets and database connectors let us securely access private data from within a notebook, thanks to the separation we saw before between the source code that's saved on Observable and the value produced when that code runs in your local browser. By storing your private credentials securely in your account, secrets and database connectors allow you to safely bridge the gap between your Observable hosted notebook and your organization's data backend or cloud infrastructure, allowing you to make use of those credentials in your notebook's code without exposing their values. If you've upgraded to a team or enterprise account, you can take advantage of security features like secrets and database connectors in notebooks shared privately within your team. But when working on a team, there are additional security considerations to take into account with respect to who on the team has access to what. Each user on a team or enterprise team has a role of either owner, editor, or viewer. Team owners can manage users' roles from the team settings page, which once again we can navigate to from the avatar in the upper right of any observable page. On the settings page, you can see and edit information about the team, such as the contact email address. And scrolling down, you'll see a list of all the team members. Owners can change any member's team-wide role, for example, to promote a teammate to co-owner or to restrict a teammate from being able to create or edit notebooks. If you're an editor on the team, once you've created a notebook and are ready to share it with your teammates, you can do so using the Share button in the upper right. You can choose who has access on a per notebook basis by granting view or edit access to your entire team and or one or more individual teammates. In addition to these team and notebook level access controls, which are available to all Teams customers, enterprise customers are equipped with two additional security measures for even more control over how team members use Observable. Owners can enable these additional protections from the Permissions tab on the Team Settings page. By default, any team member with the editor role can publish notebooks as well as edit them. On an enterprise team, owners can optionally restrict team editors from being able to publish notebooks for even more peace of mind that your team's notebooks won't accidentally be shared externally. Owners can also choose to restrict access to their observable enterprise team account by requiring team members to authenticate with your SSO provider to ensure that your organization's administrator can easily control and, if necessary, revoke access to your enterprise observable account. By allowing you to restrict access to your notebooks on a team-wide and per-notebook basis and upgrade to an enterprise account for even further control over how team members authenticate and publish content, Observable teams give you full control over who can access your account and any notebooks created within it. Combined with the security protections afforded by client-side code execution and safe access to your private data via secrets and database connectors, Observable teams facilitate collaboration across your organization so that you and your team can quickly make sense of your data without ever sacrificing the security or convenience of your existing data and security infrastructure. With a free one-month trial, you and your colleagues can take Observable Teams for a spin to explore all the features that we've seen today and many more. If you have questions at any point, or if your organization has specific security concerns we haven't addressed today, don't hesitate to get in touch with our customer success team at sales at observablehq.com.